A lot of people will go see their physician or go to the hospital and get a test. And it might be a CAT scan or colonoscopy. And they oftentimes get their records on the electronic medical record. And when they read those results, it says diverticulosis. What is that? Well, that's what today's video is on, diverticulosis. What is it? Why does it happen? What are the complications? And can anything really bad happen if you have diverticulosis? Hi, I'm Dr. Brian. I'm a medical doctor. Diverticulosis is often found during a test done for complete different reasons, such as a sigmoidoscopy or a colonoscopy or a barium And nowadays, very, very common when you have an abdomen and pelvis CAT scan because lots of people go into the hospital or into clinics and get evaluated for kidney stones or appendicitis or just belly pain. And then the colon or the large bowel is imaged and diverticulosis is mentioned. What is diverticulosis? Well, the word Word origin is diverticulum, which in Greek means blind pouch, and osis, which means the presence of a condition. So it means the presence of a condition of a blind pouch. Diverticulum is singular, and diverticula is plural. But what does that really mean? Well, to understand this, let's take a good close look at the colon. Diverticula are really little pouches or tiny sacs that hang off the colon. And you can have just a few, or you can have many, many hundreds. But to really understand that, let's explore the colon more. The colon lives in your abdomen. Now, the abdomen is a medical term for where your intestines live. And inside is both the large and the small bowel. The large bowel is known as the colon. And it looks kind of like a picture frame. It's divided into the right, or the ascending colon, the transverse colon, then the left, or the descending colon, and an S-shaped segment known as the sigmoid colon. Now, this segment, the sigmoid colon, is just before the colon and ends and where the stool comes out. And it's where most diverticula occur in the Western world. Now the small and the large intestines are built differently. The small bowel has an inner lining, which is known as the mucosa, and a layer of muscle that surrounds the outside like a giant tube. The rectum, the very end of the colon, is similar. It has a complete layer of muscle on the outside. But in between the small bowel and the rectum is the colon. It's completely different. The muscle there isn't a tube. Instead, it's it's compressed into three little thin ribbons and they're arranged around the outside of the colon and are called tinea coli. But this leaves most of the colon uncovered by the strong muscle. This in general makes the wall of the colon weak. Diverticula are an outpouching or a protrusion of the colonic mucosa, that inner layer that extends through the wall of the colon to form a little pouch or a sac that actually sits outside the wall of your colon. Diverticula go through the wall where there is no muscle, and that's why you don't see the same kind of diverticulum in the small bowel or in the rectum. Now, they usually measure less than about a quarter of an inch, but sometimes they can be much larger, and then they're known as giant diverticula. Now, these protrusions of the colonic mucosa extend through weak points in the colon wall. When there's no muscle, that's weak, but there's another especially weak spot in the colon wall. That's where blood vessels penetrate the wall of the colon, and since the diverticulum particulum push out right next to the blood vessels, these blood vessels are especially prone to bleeding. So what causes diverticulosis? Well, the short answer, we don't know. The long answer, we know that diverticulosis is very age dependent. If you're 40 years old, 20% of the time do you have diverticula. But if you're 60, 60% 60 of the time you have diverticula. There's very clear associations with older age, with male gender, with smoking, and elevated body mass index, obesity, all really increase your risk of diverticulosis. Now, contrary to popular belief, there are some really large-scale studies that show that the development of diverticula are not associated with low fiber intake, constipation, and dietary red meat, fat, alcohol consumption, and even physical inactivity don't appear to contribute to the risk of diverticulosis. The true reason for diverticulosis is unknown, but it's thought to be largely due to abnormal colonic motility. What is that mean? Motility is how the colon contracts and moves stool from the top part to the bottom part where you get rid of it. And again, diverticula clearly develop at the points of weakness, again, where blood vessels go through the wall and when there's no muscle. Abnormal connective tissue is also thought to be associated with diverticulosis. There are a number of genetic diseases like Marfan's disease or Ehlers-Danlos where there is deficient connective tissue. These individuals develop diverticula much more commonly 
much younger than other individuals. So if you do have diverticulosis, are there any complications? Well, yes, although most people with diverticulosis have no symptoms and will remain symptom-free for the rest of their lives. But a person with diverticulosis may have two main complications. In about one out of four individuals who have really severe diverticulosis, you can get what is known as diverticulitis. And in about 15% of people, you can get what's known as diverticular bleeding. Diverticulitis is inflammation of a diverticulum. This is when there is thinning and breakdown of the diverticular wall. Little tiny holes will occur in the diverticulum and some of the trillions of bacteria in your colon will leak out where they don't belong. A localized infection or worse can occur. Now if you want to learn more about the bacteria in your colon, take a look at this short on the gut microbiome. So the symptoms of diverticulitis primarily depend on the degree of inflammation and the amount of bacteria outside the colon. The most common symptom is pain in what's known as the left lower quadrant. We divide the abdomen into four different quadrants, right upper, left upper, right lower, and left lower. The sigmoid colon is localized in the left lower quadrant, and so the left lower quadrant is where diverticulitis symptoms usually present. Other symptoms in pain can include nausea, vomiting, constipation, diarrhea, and even urinary symptoms where it burns when you try to urinate or pee, or you have an urge to frequently urinate. And diverticulitis is divided into simple and complicated forms. Simple diverticulitis, which accounts for about 75% of cases, isn't associated with really any complication, and it typically responds to simple antibiotic treatment. It doesn't require any surgery. It's often identified on a CAT scan, where you see inflammatory change surrounding a diverticulum, but nothing else. Now, complicated diverticulitis, which occurs in about 25% or one out of four cases, usually requires surgery or another invasive procedure to fix it. And the complications associated with diverticulitis include the following. An abscess, where bacteria leak out of the colon, you get a localized collection of pus. Or a fistula. This is an abnormal connection between two areas, between the bowel and something next door, like the bladder or another loop of bowel. Or you can get so much inflammation from the diverticula where it ruptures and leaks that you can get an entire blockage of the colon. Or you can get more serious infection than the abscess. You can get peritonitis where the infection spreads all around the organs in the abdomen. Or the infection can go even one step further where it gets into your bloodstream and spreads throughout all of your body. In addition to diverticulitis, the other main risk is diverticular bleeding. Diverticular bleeding occurs when that little small artery that was located right near the diverticulum, remember the weak spot where that little mucosal pouch forms? Formed, that is very prone to bleed. Diverticular bleeding usually causes painless bleeding from the rectum. In approximately 50% of cases, an individual will see maroon or dark red or bright red blood with bowel movements. And most cases of diverticular bleeding will resolve their own, but occasionally you have to have additional tests and treatment. And these include colonoscopy, where they look from below with a scope and they do a procedure to stop the bleeding. You can have angiography, where an interventional radiologist looks in the blood vessel with a catheter and blocks off a bleeding vessel, or you might have to have surgery where they cut out a certain area of your colon that has very, very severe and bleeding diverticulum. That's diverticulosis. And stay tuned on this channel for an additional video in the future on more details on diverticulitis. And thanks for watching.